Okay, Community Matters here on a given Tuesday at the 12 o'clock block. I'm Jay Fidel of ThinkTech, and to my left is Craig Wagnall. He's a lawyer, um, and he's also a concerned citizen. Am I right, Craig? You're right on both accounts. <laughs> and I'm allowed to be both, I believe. So. You can, if you wish. <laughs> you should, actually. But I, I believe agree. lawyers have special duties to our society. Well, you know, we certainly have some education that allows us as concerned citizens to hopefully, you know, uh, both objectively and, uh, and subjectively look at, at the issues in the public and, uh, and problems and, you know, step out and yeah. make our voice heard. Well spoken. Very important point. Uh, anyway, today is uh, measles in Washington and around the world. Um, and it's a, it's a very, uh, it's, it's so unpleasant um, to see this phenomenon happening, even in the face of all the ignorance we have on other issues in the country. Um, but there are states, a number of states, uh, where people don't want anti-vaccine. They don't want vaccinations, and they don't want mm, uh, laws that require vaccinations <laughs> about measles. And as a result, because people take this position, don't vaccinate their kids, their kids get sick. And the kids next to them in school get sick. And we have epidemics in several states. Can you talk about it? Well, I mean, let's talk about what's happening now, because th this is not a small issue. And yet, at the same time, it's an interesting issue from, you know, just from a, almost a scientific standpoint. In 2000, measles was a non-issue. It had basically been eradicated for the United States. So how is it that we're seeing right now in our society pockets of measles showing up? And not just small pockets, but large numbers. Washington, in the last number of months, has had over 70 cases of measles. And these strike primarily to the, to the young kids and such. How can this happen when we have the vaccin vaccines and such available to keep kids uh, from even getting this? The MMR vaccine has been around a long time. What's keeping kids from taking that? And the answer is the parents. But why would they do that knowing that this is a, uh, you know, a solid protection against it? I mean, we'd eradicated measles. And the MMR vaccine is measles, mumps, and rubella. Well, it's obvious some kids aren't taking it. Here in Hawaii, we had mumps a while back, and we had cases of mumps showing up. But it's not just children, it's adults and such as well, the elderly, other people with uh, immune uh, conditions and such uh, that, that affect their immune systems uh, can also be uh, affected and mm, such by it. Yeah. Uh, where we have a lot of people coming in from other countries, immigrating and such, we have more of a danger because they haven't necessarily had access yeah. to this as children at other times. But nowadays, if you're born here in the United States, the MMR vaccine is a standard protocol and really should be taken. Well, there was for a time when it was measles was wiped out. There were no it were or was no measles. That's right. Right. The vaccine worked all over town in every city and state around the world. But somehow we, that is the species, has regressed. And the reason is that people don't want to take the vaccines. Is there a rational reason for that? Why do people make up their minds? They don't want, it to, they don't want their kids to take the vaccine. Okay, well, let's, I mean, that's a good question and a fair question. And one of the most difficult parts of that one is there are rational reasons for not taking it, but they're really rare. The rational reason for not taking it would be my child has an immune condition and such, and the As doctor says there'd be dangers in taking this. Um, so with, within is any that a legitimate reason? Society, that's, a, that's is. an objective, factual, scientific reason. Yes, it is. But there are very few children with immune-compromised condition that would prevent them from being able to take mm -hmm. it. And quite frankly, within any community, there's a certain percentage that could not take it, and we still have uh, you know, non-viability for measles as, as a contagious disease. It's when it gets below that number, and that number can be 90-something percent. A tipping point kind of number. It's exactly right. With different diseases, that's different. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, with measles, we'd certainly gotten to the point within the United States, as you pointed out, not within the world, but not within the world because it hasn't been available. And it hasn't been available because it costs money, because those societies don't have a distribution network or a government that's supportive of it. So if you, you know, in other places, they don't have it. So this issue doesn't come up about the, you know, the reasons why they, they don't do it is because they don't have it. They don't have the resources. They don't have the medicine. But in the United States, I think it's fair to say that every state of the union, every community in every state, measles vaccine is available. Absolutely true. And yet there are an incre increasing, this is very troubling, an increasing number of parents who don't want their kids to be vaccinated. This is incredible. And, and okay, let's put, on the, put aside the ones who have the children who have immune deficiencies. 
Let's talk about the others. What kind of mental process are we talking about there? Well, the challenge here is um, in, a, in an information society where we have an internet and social media and all this going on, we have, we have an abundance of information, but we don't have a good way of sorting and, and, and understanding that information. And so misinformation... That's why we have think tech, by the way. Uh, there you go. <laughs> but, but that's the problem, is that the, the challenge of sorting and understanding and being able to both value and, and, uh, and place the appropriate weight on information is ex one of the biggest challenges of this, this generation. Um, my son, the first thing he does, anything comes up, go to YouTube, figure it out, okay? Or go to, go to the, the social media and, and other things. And I understand that, but this is a society ripe for someone like Andrew Wakefield. So Andrew Wakefield, years back, he was at the time Dr. Andrew Wakefield, a real published a study <laughs> saying that there was a link between, uh, you know, the MMR vaccine and autism. Turns out this study was done didn't follow the scientific method, had a small, a very small group of people, and um, it was debunked. I mean, it was absolutely debunked, okay, to the point that the magazine had to print a retraction, the one that printed his report, and he lost his, his, his medical license. Now, all of this happens, but notwithstanding that, the anti-vaccine movement still points to that as a basis for uh, science, and, and it wasn't science, but as a basis for science that supports a, a, a concern that there's a link between the MMR vaccine and, and autism. Is there any, is anything else in the firmament here, aside from Wakefield, that has made this statement that they can rely on? My understanding is there is no science to support this, this argument, no science to support this movement. Well, the biggest challenge is that there, 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 are, there are antidotal, uh, it, and, and I, I hate to call it evidence because I don't think it's evidence, it's antidotal uh, uh, occurrences that happen. So it, it, let me give you an example. You know, let, your child has autism, and um, the child had the MMR vaccine, and so they, they're looking, and, and you understand why parents do this, but they're desperately looking for some reason why their child has this condition of autism and such. And so the end result of that is, well, they, they have this MMR vaccine, I saw something on it, and so then they, through social media and other things, start to proffer the fact that there's a causal link between it. And the danger is this anecdotal evidence is not evidence at all that there's actually a link between those two. You might as well say, well, my child ate a lot of Oreo cookies, or they rode on the polo pony at the fair, and as a result, they got autism. Um, but doesn't so it's, make sense so at it's all. Not a, it's not a scientific... It's not good thinking. But it's it's an flawed emotional. thinking. It is flawed thinking. And that's the challenge. I mean, that, overcoming that, because it, 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 it tugs at the heart, it tugs at, at, at the emotions of people that are dealing with a challenging condition or looking for answers or reasons. So, you know, like, is somebody pushing this message? I mean, is there a leader, for example, to this movement who keeps on pumping out information and, <clears throat> you know, misinformation to support uh, this, quote, scientific claim? Um, that there are bad uh, medical effects from taking the uh, vac vaccine? Um, or, or is this something else, a new phenomenon in our world, a phenomenon we've seen emerging on other issues, a phenomenon created which lives in social media, which lives in irresponsible reporting on social media and irresponsible reading of social media? Which one? Or both. Well, I, I was going to say, I, I don't know that it's as simple as to say it's one or the other. Um, you know, from everything I can tell, I mean, there are some leaders. There are groups, and, and anti-vaccination groups, and there are leaders of those groups. But I think alone they wouldn't be able to create the kind of, you know, pull the kind of traction that they've been able to do in this particular area if it weren't for the fact that, uh, you know, that, that the social media and other things are falling behind it. So, yes, there, there's a, an engine going on there. But on top of that... We've, had, we've seen some very famous people jump into the fray and start giving their voice. And one of the dumbest reasons I've ever heard of for not vaccinating a child is, well, Jim Carrey uh, says that, that, that there's a link between the MMR vaccine and, uh, it, it, and autism. And, you know, for, for all the great movies, Ace Ventura, Dumb and Dumber, Dumb and Dumber 2, Well, this is liar, dumb. Liar, this is dumb. I mean, it's consistent all, with Dumb and Dumber. Isn't all, all these great movies, and, and I like Jim Carrey as an actor, and, 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 and so this isn't a comment necessarily against his ability to act, but just because you can act well, just because you're a great singer, just because you can play sports particularly well, does not mean 
that you hold any better credence, in fact, that you hold any credence at all, that we should be listening to relating to whether or not we should be vaccinating our children. Yeah, and how dare he go public on that? He's not qualified in any way, shape, or form to make a public statement about a technical subject. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> well, but he's only following the lines of Jenny McCarthy and numerous others who have done the same thing. And, and for as attractive as she is, this is an area that the science isn't supporting. And the difficulty is that when you like these people, these people that you see on TV, these people that you feel close to because you've had them in front of you all this time, it's easy to avoid the science and get caught up in the emotionality. And that, I think, is what's been there's happening. A, there's a phenomenon here. You know, if you're in a leadership position, and arguably anybody famous is in a leader, leadership position yeah. because they have the technology to you know, leverage their statements to millions of people, um, that person has an effect on you. On people. Yes. And, and uh, you know, the, the TV and the social media and whatnot can deliver that to large numbers of people who will follow the advice of that person, the leadership of that person, even if the person is completely unqualified. And, you know, who's pushing back? Who's pushing back? There's, there's no progressive, you know, wait a minute kind of organization that says, wait a minute, Jim, you, you can't do that. Step down, will you? Um, in fact, I, you know, I don't, you know, we criticize him here. But mm, I don't think there's anybody that, in, you know, in a large sense, criticizes them for doing this. So I, I think we have social media lives in a world of its own. Um, the leaders in Hollywood mm, are very influential, and they, you know, they, they pervert the information. They make it misinformation. And I, I, how do we deal with that? Because there are many people who never read the paper, but they read social media. There's never yes. people who never get, you know, actual facts about anything, but they watch the, the Oscars. You know, that's where they get their information from, the Oscars. You know? well, I, I think you've hit it. I mean, that's one of the major issues with, with social media. And, and one of the reasons is, is, is because it creates these groups. Social media um, is almost designed to, to create groups of people that have like thinking. And so if you enter that group and you don't share that thinking, and you, in fact, either criticize or in some way question that, you can be the subject of ridicule. I mean, to the point of, uh, of almost threatening. It's like bullying. It's things. kind of a, a version of bullying. Well, exactly. And so what ends up happening is that, it, as you said, it takes on almost a life of its own. And, and, and in these groups, the discussion doesn't center around whether or not you know, there's strong science supporting it. It, it. it pulls in groups of people that have made these same anecdotal links between either their child's or a friend's or a relative's uh, autistic child and the fact that they ha also had uh, an MMR vaccine. Um, and again, you know, most children do have MMR vaccines in the United States. So if you take all of the autistic children from among them, which were statistically going to happen uh, in the United States, and, and they start talking and then they point out that, oh, we also had the MMR vaccine, um, I think you're going to find that that's going to be almost universally true. Mm. Okay. It's also going to be universally true that they probably all had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich at some time in their life, that they, you know, that they all played on a jungle gym, and uh, you know, that they all like Oreos. Yeah. I mean, that just is, it, these are all things that uh, are, are, you know, maybe in common, but are not causally linked. Yeah. So, forward thinking on a mass scale. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing that, uh, that enters into this is that why... That some of these people know, even though they don't agree with, the medical profession and the public health profession is telling them it's wrong. It's no relationship. You know, here's, here's the right, uh, you know, survey. This is, this is what we know medically for a fact. But they don't, they don't buy that. And um, I think that, that opens up a whole new sociological question in this country. You don't trust the institutions. You don't trust the medical profession. You don't trust the government. You don't trust public health officials. You'd rather buy it from Jim. <laughs> Carrie. <laughs> you know, because you love him. Yeah. It's an emotional thing. And it's very troubling because we see this in other aspects on other issues of our society, don't you think? We, we absolutely do, but we see it in the medical profession as well. Okay, so you don't have to walk back that far. Go, go back to... I don't know, 1960s. And you look at the pictures of doctors all standing there with their pipes. And they're all smoking. <laughs> right. Okay? And, 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 and the, you know, the nurses are smoking cigarettes. And the, you know, this was commonly accepted practice. And the link between 
cigarette smoking and, 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 uh, uh, and cancer had not been developed, and even when it had been developed, the tobacco manufacturers were actively bringing in researchers to research to try and debunk the, the, the causal link that had been uh, determined by the medical profession. And this went on and went back and forth until finally it was a subject of huge lawsuits and such. And, and they demonstrated that these, the, these companies that were being set up and funded by the, the tobacco manufacturers were actually fronts for pseudoscience in an effort to try and continue to challenge the actual causal links that have been developed scientifically to prove the link between cancer and, 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 uh, and smoking <coughs> cigarettes. So it is understandable that people have this fear uh, in a lot of different areas of the institutions, of the medical profession, of the government, of all of this. And I get that one. But when it comes to, the, and, and if you want to roll the dice and such with that, with you, that's one thing. The danger is we're doing that with our kids. And it's years from now that the kids end up facing either epidemics or other health issues that, you know, from cancer to, to, to other problems that... Because of the measles. Because of the measles. And, and, and that's just on the MMR vaccine. Those that are in the anti -vax, on the anti-vaccine movement and are, are strongly believing in that are also not taking a host of others. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, when we come back from this break, Craig, I want to talk about um, other leadership political leadership in Washington. I want to talk about their obligation to do things, and in the states, in the state capitals. Let's we'll talk about legislation. That's Craig Wagno. He's a concerned citizen and a lawyer, which is actually synonymous. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m., on Friday afternoons, and then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up, and please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, and they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff, but I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday. And stand the energy man at lunchtime at noon on my lunch hour we're going to talk about everything energy especially if it begins with the word hydrogen we're going to definitely be talking about it we'll talk about how we can make hawaii cleaner how we can make the world a better place just basically save the planet even miss america can't even talk about stuff like that anymore we got it nailed down here so we'll see you on friday at noon with stand the energy man aloha Okay, we're back here on Community Matters with Craig Wagnall. We're talking about um, the measles uh, in Washington and other places in the country. Um, and I, I want to I say, if you want to know more about the technical aspects of this and how the vaccine works, if you want to know how Craig felt about this about a year ago, uh, there's a commentary on our YouTube collection and on our website where he, uh, he, he made a very no less passionate statement <laughs> about the subject of vaccinations. Uh, so uh, it's worth taking a look at that. The other thing that comes to mind, uh, you know, as a consequence of Craig's comments so far is that, <clears throat> yes, you, you, you take a vac vaccination, you, you have your kid take a vaccination, um, you know, for your family, uh, for him and, uh, or her. But you also take a vaccine. I can hear the, the voice of John Kennedy ringing in my head. <laughs> do it not only for your family, do it for the community, do it for the country. Because, you know, every single one of these multiple dozens of epidemics around the country is pretty serious. And I'm going to ask Craig about that. <clears throat> uh, is a result of people refusing to their kids the vaccination. And do it for the children that are immune compromised, that cannot take advantage of the MMR or other vaccines. Um, you know, they're in a position of ultimate vulnerability because not only can they not take the vax vaccine that would prevent them from getting measles or mumps or rubella or, or, or some other host of disease, but they, um, they're susceptible to it, and, and highly so. Yeah. Did you ever hear or see of kids themselves uh, saying, I don't want the vaccine? Well, every kid doesn't want a shot. Okay. <laughs> okay, but not that they don't want the vaccine. And it shocks me that at my children's school, and at most school, many schools now, 
you can't walk in there with a peanut butter sandwich. You can't bring peanuts on campus because it might harm. There's students that have uh, uh, allergies and other things to that, that that are dangerous and in times life threatening. So there's reasons behind that. But you can't do that, but you could walk on there potentially carrying measles, mumps, and rebellum, and that's an exercise of your uh, individual philosophical and or religious views, yeah. and it's acceptable. If any kid tells me he's got a philosophical objection, I'm going to say, are you kidding me? <laughs> you're, too, you're much too young to even address philosophy. Tell me about Immanuel Kant. <laughs> Tell me about Heidegger, man. And then we'll talk about your philosophical position on the universe. I, I have a teenager. He has a philosophical position on everything. But, <laughs> but I agree that that, that that is one that I have not seen come from the kids. This is one that has demonstrated itself time and again, and particularly now, as an exercise by the parents of parental, the freedom of parental rights. And that's what it's turned into. And that's the line that's being drawn by anti-vaccination groups and others is this is our right to, to do what we want with our children, to, with our families. We need to have this control. We don't want to have it made for us. And so we're drawing the line. If we don't want to vaccinate our kids, we won't vaccinate. I, I consider that criminal, considering that the kid is in touch with other kids. And this is the kind of conduct uh, that, that leads to epidemics. And we don't know the extent of the epidemics yet. We know from the Washington Post, they're, they're in dozens of states now. And they're in foreign countries now. And, um, you know, it could come to Hawaii just as easily with so much travel here. Well, very easily. And it has numerous times. Both, both measles and mumps have mm -hmm. come to out here on Maui and I, I believe on the Big Island as well. We've seen different small, uh, you know, uh, occurrences, you know, a handful of people. But again, the fear is there that if we have, do not have the critical mass vaccinated, we have the potential for an evidence. Certain percentage tipping point. Yeah. <clears throat> so if you, if you have X percent of a given population that's not being vaccinated, you're, you're pretty sure it's going to spread like wildfire, particularly if it's introduced from outside that's correct. into that community. And that, that's, yes, and that, that's my <coughs> understanding. And that, uh, again, is different depending on the, 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 the disease we're talking about in terms of the actual percentage. But it's not a small uh, number that need to be vaccinated. We're talking in the 95 to 97% of the population that needs to be vaccinated with measles in order for that to be an effective deterrent to any type of epidemic. So it strikes me that this is a perfect time for national governments to take action. This is a perfect time for our president, Donald J. Trump, to take action uh, and to say, wait, we have a, we have a national health emergency. We have, we have all these states where all these kids are getting infected, and you don't even know the consequences to their lives, as you mentioned, going forward. Who knows what will flow? There are you know, bad side effects medically out of having the measles. Um, so, you know, has the federal government done anything about this epidemic? Well, to my knowledge, no. I, I mean, the general, uh, the general effort and, the, and, and everything has been concentrated primarily on trying to get a message out about them and, and, and to encourage uh, and the um, you know children you know parents to always be uh, vaccinating their children to provide to make sure that the distribution networks and everything else are in place to have that available for everyone. Uh, that's but, step one. That's availability. Step one, yes. And information. And and so yes and so that effort has 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 been made. It sounds like Roe v. Wade yeah, in, a, yeah. in a funny way, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> but as you mentioned, I mean, this is becoming. This isn't just one pocket in one state. I mean, we have uh, we have it appearing in states you know all over the country, and in particularly measles right now. And 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 that is so odd, given that it was only you know it was less than twenty years ago. This was eradicated. I mean, it just literally there was nobody no was thinking here. about it, and so it, it makes you think of something like uh, you know, like like polio, for example. Okay, you don't see any kids coming home from school going, ah, oh, you know, Jimmy didn't come because he has polio and he's going to die. I mean, that doesn't happen in our schools. That doesn't happen in our society. Why is that? The March of Dimes was was created to to eradicate polio. You know what it did? It eradicated polio. It's gone. Look up. March of Dimes isn't even dealing with polio anymore. They went to birth defects in general, and now they're dealing with, uh, you know, pregnancy for, uh, I mean, health, uh, healthy pregnancies and such. 
I mean, they're doing wonderful work. It's not polio now, yeah. and it yeah. doesn't need to be anymore. Yeah. The other thing that strikes me is if you entered a certain community and you said, okay, we're going to vaccinate everybody now, except the ones who have immune deficiencies, um, <clears throat> that doesn't stop the, the, um, the, the health problem because it takes a while for the vaccination to have an effect. It's not immediate, is it? Well, it isn't. And so then that's one of the other dangers is that it, the, the wait and see approach doesn't work with immunization. And the reason is there's an incubation period and a period where your body is building the, uh, you know, the white blood cells and the, and, and the counteractive measures so that you won't get it. So that if you are in a situation where an epidemic has started, it's too late for you to be running trying to get your, your vaccination then. You know? Yeah. That's, that's very scary because even if the federal government decided to do something more affirmative. By the way, before we close, I need to know what the federal government could do, at least in your view, um, on a moral basis, on a socially acceptable basis um, in terms of legislation. Uh, how could it um, make people have their kids take the vaccination? What, what could it do? Um, well, that's, without violating your that's, sense of your sense of the of the ethical issues involved. Well, that's I mean that's the million dollar question, and and right now what they're doing is they're taking a step back and saying this is a states' rights issue, and and part of the reason it's a states' rights issue is because there are you know first of all you're you're supposed to take uh, uh, you're required to take the MMR vaccine as a condition to attending public school, and that that is one of the things that across the nation is is, wait, wait, is, is that everywhere? That's everywhere. Okay, but there are exemptions from it, and those two exemptions are primarily philosophical and religious. And different states have allowed those two exemptions, or one of those exemptions. Here in Hawaii, we have we have a religious exemption, but not philosophical exemption. But you know, as a practical matter, saying that you have a religious exemption is taken at face value. So whether or not you actually are part of a formalized religion that says no vaccines. Is not, uh, is not the question. It's a question of whether or not you've elected not to do it and that you, you claim that that basis is uh, because of your religious beliefs. You know, I'd like to tell my kid, you know, that's Johnny over there. Uh, he has declined to take the vaccination on, on the basis of religious or philosophical reasons. Don't go near that kid. <laughs> you know, how about ostracizing that kid because he's dangerous? Uh, okay. okay, then, you know, then you get into the question of is it, is it appropriate to reveal this, this ostensibly private matter where this kid has refused to take the vaccination because that's exactly what Could I would we tell put a Michael. star or a mark on them somewhere yeah <laughs> <laughs> I think we'd be going a little far to do that one but 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 it's a, it, it's a fair point I mean you can't look at somebody and tell whether or not they've been va vaccinated and immunized for any particular diseases and such and and I don't think we want to have that but what we do want to do, and I, I think this is the biggest challenge with this, is we've got to get past this misinformation campaign that's going on. I mean, all of us as concerned citizens need to be looking at things critically, every bit of information that comes in. But look at the real science behind it. Yeah. And, you know, so what, what you have is its variation. You know, if the federal government says, oh, this is a state's rights sort of thing, which I don't agree with, but... Um, that, you know, what happens is you have different standards around the country. They're, now, measles is the same in every state. Measles is always the same. Yeah. It's, it's, it's uniform, you know, its identity, its operation, its function, its damage. It's the same everywhere. It's a, it's a natural phenomenon. And it doesn't know any boundaries. So why, why have different standards in different states? Why have different legislation that either passes or is protested out or doesn't pass or nobody introduces it? You, you, you know, you have, you have variations, huge variations. If we made a grid, you know, a matrix of all the different ways that the various 50 states deal with this issue, it would be that wide, 50 by 50. <clears throat> so, I mean, I, I, you know, and, and take a moment and address that and tell me, you know, roughly how much, mm, how much dispute is going on in the streets and the social media with the, with the signs in front of the Capitol buildings. What is it like out there? Well... I mean, the, the challenge with that, in my mind, is that, uh, you're right, measles, it knows no boundaries. It can cross any, any state, anywhere, it can cross other countries, it can go anywhere, okay? It, it, it also is not, you know, it, it measles is measles is measles. So it's the same issue that we're dealing with everywhere. The challenge with that one is, if you utilize that as your basis for federal legislating, quite frankly, there's going to be very le little left to the states, because... That's true of so many different social and, and, and uh, uh, 
uh, and political type issues that are going on in the different states. And we, as a country, have held strong to the fact that within our states, we want these states' rights to be strong. We want to be able to address issues within our communities. And so for the most part, the federal government in those areas has tried to stay to keep off. Where I think you're going to see it come back is the fact that we have we have pockets in you know Washington and in California and in Arizona and possibly Hawaii and other places where this measles starts coming up. The, the Post has a map of all this. The Washington Post has a, a, a lot of states are measles states now. That's right. And, and if I were considering moving or taking a job in a state, I would look that up. Well, you, you may want to know that one. That's right. <laughs> and particularly if you have young children or, 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 or immuni immuni sorry, immunization compromised uh, you know, uh, people in your family, older, older people, um, that becomes more of a concern and an issue, obviously. Uh, but as it becomes more of a national issue, and when you have one pocket here, or, you know, one or two issues and, and such, it's one thing. As it starts to pop up in other states and it starts to be looked at as an epidemic on a more national scale, we could see action being taken on a federal level. Well, we'll see what happens, Craig. You know, the reality is we live at a time when people are not necessarily trusting of government. <laughs> and this is part, this whole affair is part of that phenomenon. It certainly is. Thank you, Craig. Hey, Craig thank Wagner, you for having me. Certain citizen and attorney synonymous. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>